In this video, I'm going to briefly talk about recursion. Now, if you haven't ever studied recursion before, this isn't a video that's going to teach you how recursion works. So go ahead and go out there and make sure you actually understand recursion already before you watch this video. There are plenty of tutorials on it, and interviewers just love to ask obscure recursion questions to trip up candidates. So just do yourself a favor and go ahead and educate yourself on the topic. And then you can come back to this video whenever you're done. Now, utilizing the call stack to do little nifty tricks in non-functional programming languages is really the motivation for using recursion a lot of the time. However, in a functional programming language where you have immutable data, you end up using recursion sometimes just as sort of a replacement for a loop. Additionally, due to the kind of ever-present threat of stack overflows, a lot of times whenever you do recursion, you need to make sure that your recursive function can be tel-call optimized, and so you have your recursive call as the very last thing in your function. And this makes it look even more like a loop. So I'll show you what I mean with an example here. What you'll do typically when you're writing a recursive method is you'll oftentimes start off with your terminating conditions, just like you would in the loop. And then you'll have the body of the loop itself. After that, at the end, you have your recursive call. Pretty easy. And in fact, this is actually something that you can almost mechanically translate to and from an iterative loop. One thing you'll notice is that sometimes you need to thread a value through your recursive calls, and this is a really common pattern. It's so common, in fact, that we'll talk about it in the next video, so go ahead and tune into that if you want more info on that. Now, if you find this a little bit awkward at first, don't worry about it. You don't have to use it as often as you would think, so don't let that put you off of functional programming. Now, I will say, if you do really kind of gimmicky problems, like on Hacker Rank or Project Euler or something like that, you might end up having to use this a lot. So if you're finding that's the case, maybe try experimenting with a more practical application. And I promise you this, this kind of thing doesn't come up nearly as often as you would think. Now, if you feel like you've got a handle on this and maybe want some more advanced insights, go ahead and check out the next video on Reduce and Accumulators.